Chainsaw Man versus Katana Man Part 2 is happening right now. In the last episode for now, we start back with Aki versus the Ghost Devil, the former devil of Himino. And we start by seeing a flashback of Aki and Himino. And as always, Himino wants to make Aki start smoking. She takes a cigarette back and promises Aki that she will give it to him once he's an adult. Right now, Aki is fighting the Ghost Devil, but they stopped and Himino's former devil gave him her cigarettes. On the cigarette, there is something written and it says, Easy Revenger. So I'm unsure if the Ghost Devil actually disobeyed its master or if it was like still in a way like loyal to Himino. But obviously, Obviously, there is some kind of weird connection there that we have to investigate on. I also want you guys to remember that Saratari does not have an actual contract with the Ghost Devil. The Ghost Devil was just captured by Saratari's devil and is now working with them, but under like a forceful contract in a way. But either way, the Ghost Devil gave the cigarette to Aki and Aki remembered how to beat it. The Ghost Devil can't see and only senses fear. So Aki breathes and without being afraid, he climbs up on the Ghost Devil and slices its neck open. Saratari was in shock and just about to call her snake devil but aki said don't kill her yet turns out while she was busy with aki kobina already had a knife at her throat i'm not gonna lie guys kobina is slowly becoming one of my goats i ain't gonna lie kobini i mean is this really the same girl that was the one that was panicking maybe she had like some kind of awakening or something or maybe she got like a ghost devil that kind of takes over her body or i don't really know exactly what's going on kobini because one time like she's really scared and the next time she's like james bond going up in that bitch and just stabbing people and killing them and you know what i'm saying what doing whatever but honestly she's becoming a really cool character for me i'm not gonna lie the main duo dingy and Pat in an elevator heading for the katana devil but the elevator makes a stop at the wrong level which just so happens to be full of zombies the zombies didn't even notice them but since it is impossible not to notice power she jumps in and brutally kills all of them Denji, on the other hand, is like, nope, and closes the door <laughs> and heads up where the Kadana Devil is already waiting for him. The Kadana Devil goes on about how Denji can live without feeling, even a tiny bit of remorse after killing the Kusa, and that he might turn himself in if Denji apologizes and let him kill him. He won't believe that he killed the Yakuza because they turn into zombies. The Katana Man, regardless, tells Denji that he doesn't have a human's heart anymore because he doesn't feel a bit of guilty for killing those people, even if they turn into zombies. And this is something that we also talked about last week, if you guys remember our breakdown last week if you didn't watch it go watch it again this is dingy realizing that he has no emotions to anything last week when he was asking himself would i care if power died or aki died or makima if anybody had died he noticed that he didn't care and if you guys remember in the beginning very first episode he was a very emotional person who did care about things like pochita and his dad but ever since pochita had taken over his heart he didn't care anymore and that's why this moment right here it's a little bit closer to home than normal especially for dingy who doesn't care for anything except the hot Hill. While this may have worked on some other Shonen main characters, Denji straight up says no. And yeah, obviously, fucking A, I keep stepping on this ladder. Sorry, guys. I'm still in mom's basement, okay? I can't help it. Okay, let's try that again. Hey, do me a favor. Put a picture of a ladder right here so I can kick it real fast. While this may have worked on some other Shonen main characters, Denji straight up says no. And yeah, obviously the Katana man doesn't make sense and tries to manipulate him since he has killed people too. And I mean, a lot of people. But he didn't mention that while the people Denji killed enslaved him for years and would have killed him if he didn't kill them. Plus, they were literally zombies. Even though right now this might not affect Denji, as we got to know, he is someone who will probably think about it in the future and maybe think of him more as a devil than it does now. Because unlike Katana man, he can reflect on himself. And while sure the Katana Katana Man is a complete villain who didn't feel anything after killing and enslaving people. Denji also didn't feel bad for killing those guys either. But right now, none of that matters. And they start fighting. And they punch each other from building to building. And Denji is actually holding himself even way better than the last time. It seems that the training that he's done with Teacher is finally paying off. So good job, Denji. Good job. They punch each other until they arrive on top of a train, beating the shit out of each other. The Katana Devil asks him, what is he fighting for? And Denji says, to protect the life I have right now. And yeah, that's a solid reason to fight back. I mean, for real, that's the reason we all go to work, right? To essentially like earn money, to keep our house up, keep the electricity, the bills on. That's pretty much what Genji fights. He literally thinks of it as like just going to a days of work and basically to kind of like have his income in a way to kill devils. They continue fighting and they end up inside the train. And hey, isn't that Rengoku and Tanjiro in the train? Never mind, wrong anime. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong anime. RIP, my man. RIP, Rengoku. Sorry. Late, bro. The fight continues in the train where the passengers are and Denji ended up protecting people. So the Katana man got a full hit on him and that's showing again that he is still one of the human and not like the Katana man. After he gets rid of one of Denji's hands, Denji says he still has one chainsaw on his head and that he can still fight with. So with the typical anime sword fight clash and like a Zoro fashion, Denji and the Katana man, they're like fighting each other and he's all like, ching. And like, you know how they stand? Like they're standing like this right here and then like all of a sudden like one falls and the other one's like this right here. 
and you're like, yeah, I'm super strong. That's pretty much what happens. And Denji's head chainsaw got broken in the process. He actually mega brained the katana man because he straight up lied. His head chainsaw wasn't the only chainsaw he had. He made another one in his leg, which he sliced the katana man in half and won the battle. Quoting his sensei, Denji says, what hunter tells his prey the truth? Now that's cold. I ain't gonna lie. That was cold. That was kind of cold. I ain't gonna lie. After the katana man wakes up, he is tied up on the train rows and they're waiting for the cops to come. Aki joins them and Denji has an idea. Since he killed Himeno, he wants to make a contest and the winner is whoever gets Katana Man to scream the loudest by kicking him in the nuts wins. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> that's that's evil as shit, why? But I mean like, again, that is kind of awesome that Denji is becoming more aware of his emotions and unlocking that by letting Aki get revenge. And, and in previous episodes, he would not care about that. Like you would have to promise him boobs or like a hot meal or something like cool or like a date with Makima to do anything. But now he's just doing it and protecting people on this train just because that is the right thing to do. And it's kind of cool to see him actually become a main character. That is very main character qualities that Denji was missing that he is obviously like, like getting. And Denji kind of like goes towards us a little bit and kind of relatability when it comes to being voided in a way. Like you kind of feel empty and you don't know what exactly what you're doing in life sometimes. And kind of like you're just kind of like going through the motions until you finally have something that you care about or people that you care about or things that you care about. And then you start acting that way. So Denji doing that now is actually very cool to see his character progression becoming of that. So I'm excited to see more from Denji, especially after the season finale. We don't know yet. Back to Makima, reporting that the attack was started by Saratari, the snake girl, who had a deal with the gun devil so that she could get guns for men. And we find out that it was the gun devil who wanted Denji's heart. They didn't get a chance to question her about it because she got caught and the snake devil killed her. It probably was her contract as well, that once she lost, she died. So either way, guys, the mission was a success. Aki didn't end up dying. Denji Denji grows in character possession, the Katana Man is captured, and Makima is still Makimami. Anyway, guys, I'm so glad that I got to dissect this with you today. If you guys want more of this, trust, there's going to be way more. And we do more anime as well, guys. Don't worry about that. We had a video that we dropped yesterday. You guys should go check it out. It's a masterpiece about Mob Psycho and, you know, how over the past six years it has been like one of the top anime. Go check it out. It's right here. Either way, it's Anime Dojo, and we're out.